The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one whom he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. On this Sunday, we continue our uh, study, our um, review of what's called the Bread of Life Discourse of Jesus, found in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John. And uh, we know that last week we uh, heard the account of the feeding of the five thousands with the loaves and the fishes. And today is a continuation of that same um, story, that same account. And we find that the people are uh, still searching for Jesus. They, they, they probably uh, are aware, these crowds, that Jesus performed the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes that he fed them um, with, let's say, earthly food. He satisfied their temporal hunger. And they were excited about this because they experienced this tremendous miracle. And um, of course, that came along with the reputation of Jesus as a great preacher and one who had been performing miracles, curing people of their illnesses and um, um, giving people relief from grief and, and hunger and sickness. And, and so they were um, excited about who this preacher was, this miracle worker. They wanted, perhaps, to make him into some kind of king, some kind of earthly king. They wanted him to uh, be their leader. They felt that if he were their leader in this life, that they would be satisfied with all the material needs that they had, they, they needed. And yet there's some other message here that Jesus wishes to convey to them. It's a, it's a rather interesting um, sort of play on earthly satisfaction and spiritual, eternal satisfaction. And that's, I believe, where we need to focus our attention today as we contemplate this gospel. I think all of us um, in our lives wish to be blessed with material goods, with, with uh, food, with shelter, clothing, all the necessities of this life. 
and indeed those things are uh, necessary and good for us. And I believe that like Jesus, we um, have compassion on those who go without, maybe those we might say who are less fortunate than we are. And this is an important point to think about as we contemplate the gospel today because Jesus uh, certainly wants to feed the hunger of the crowds. We saw that very clearly last week in the gospel uh, of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. N next week we're going to continue this discourse with even, even further insight. The crowds today remind Jesus that Moses had fed the Israelite people with manna from the sky, you know, this sort of heavenly bread that appeared to them as they were journeying through the desert and were hungry. God satisfied their needs. And Jesus wishes also to satisfy our needs, um, perhaps in this life. And I think that um, a component of that is where we come in as people of faith, serving the needs of the less fortunate. That's what we're called to do. This is sort of how we um, participate in the building of the kingdom of God by doing whatever we can in this life to satisfy the temporal needs of those around us, especially those who are less fortunate. That's an important uh, part of our Christian faith. But today, Jesus reminds us that there's a, a, a greater reality, and that greater reality really must be the focus. Jesus concludes the gospel today by saying to us, by saying to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. This hunger and thirst about which Jesus speaks is really um, an eternal hunger, an eternal thirst. That is, our, our inmost desire to somehow be united to God, not just in this life, but forever. That is the goal of our faith. And today, Jesus reminds us that if we're faithful to him, that he indeed will help us on this journey of life, but also um, that as we go through this life, we are always called to have that eternal perspective, which uh, sort of puts into focus, which uh, gives us a, a proper sense of what these needs in this present life are as we journey toward the next. It's kind of complicated, but this is um, where we are as people of faith. How do we respond? What does this gospel mean for us? Well, first of all, as people of faith, we relish in the fact that our God loves us so much that he, in fact, gave Jesus to us, his son, and Jesus sacrifices his body and his blood um, in order that we might be saved, in order to forgive us from sins and give us the promise of resurrection and new life. That new life starts now, right in this moment, as we are saved, as we are redeemed, as we are promised um, in our baptisms that we will inherit that eternal life. But also, as people of faith, we recognize that we participate in the building of God's kingdom here and now by the way we put our faith into action. We have faith in Jesus who's the bread of life, Jesus who satisfies our thirst for all eternity, and we um, demonstrate that. We give witness to that belief by what we do right now in participating with God's uh, great gift to us in the Eucharist. The focus is Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus who gives us eternal salvation. Jesus who offers his very body and blood to us, which is something much greater than simply bread or loaves or fishes or whatever other temporal satisfaction we might have today. And so as we contemplate this gospel, as we gather together to celebrate the Mass, as we remember that Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. And he also says, do this in memory of me, and as I have done, so you must do. Somehow, 
our work in building the kingdom of God in the here and now is a reflection, is a foreshadowing of that eternal glory that all of us hope to enjoy. And so today as we contemplate Jesus, the bread of life, as we continue to reflect on this bread of life discourse in John's Gospel, let's encourage one another with our faith, our faith in the risen Lord, the Jesus who gives us much more than simple manna from the sky. He gives us bread that lasts forever, and he satisfies our thirst in a way that nothing in this world can ever do. Let's encourage one another with this message of faith, and let's always place ourselves in the arms of our loving Father as we accept the guidance, the sacrifice, and the gift of Jesus, especially Jesus in the, in the Eucharist. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.